the excitement around it is well warranted, but I think in an enterprise or infrastructure context, I would probably wait for something that is more stable and then doesn't have these questions hanging over it. That's my take. If I had to deploy DeepSeek, I would probably focus on use cases that were not end user facing because DeepSeek is like especially susceptible to basic jailbreaks. And it would be a real pain to have to harden that if you're putting this out to users or the public or that kind of thing. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks for joining us. You know, a lot of a lot of the news of the last two weeks has been DeepSeek and sort of these new reasoning models that have been open source coming from China. Obviously, there's been the the, the bullish side of the case, which has been that this is changing everything. The economics are different. This is the golden age of apps. And the other side has been this is the beginning of the end. China's ascendant. They're taking all our data. This is horrible. You had a great blog post on this, taking a look at DeepSeek. Would love to maybe get your thoughts and talk a little bit about kind of how that's coming together. So everyone's losing their mind about DeepSeek. I noticed that too. There are kind of three things that that are notable about it, right? It's it's open source, it's reasoning, and it's from China. And I think the, the fact that it's open source and the fact that they have found this new te- technique or, you know, uh, kind of pro- proved it out is, uh, is, is great. It's a great story for everyone in, in the world um, in terms of what is possible with open source and what the future of, of these models could look like. Um, the interesting part is that the origins of, of, of the company and the fact that um, the Chinese government has a ton of influence over the models that are developed in China. So the, the, the post or the research that, that we did was focused on um, you know, characterizing that influence, seeing how deep it went, and also kind of testing, pushing the limits of the model in terms of uh, just red teaming it and seeing what sorts of adversarial techniques it responds to or doesn't respond to. And by adversarial techniques, what do you what do you mean exactly? We're really focused on things like just your your run of the mill um, uh, prompt injections, jailbreaks, that kind of thing, um, because those are often the the gateway to to messing around with other stuff, right? Like when, once you punch a hole in the defenses with something like a jailbreak, if it's part of a larger system or architecture, like a rag or agent, that would give an attacker a lot of room to to, to pivot around and, and do other things within that system. And they, they build a lot of safety features into these things, right? I mean, the, the people who build them, right? And it seemed like it had a very sophisticated layer of of, of speech limitations. Yeah, so there were there are two parts to it. Um, for DeepSeek specifically, there was the, the the part that limited speech about uh, politically sensitive topics in China. So this is stuff like, you know, Taiwan or Tiananmen Square, that kind of thing. Um, and it's pretty clear that that was basically a separate system from the typical guardrails that you see on models like this. So what, what we did is we, you know, we tried to characterize each of these on the the political sensitivity side, um, and it, it doesn't take like a like a researcher to figure this out. If you ask it about Tiananmen Square or whatever, it will either give you a refusal or it will give you like this long diatribe of of um, the, the the CCP party line, like you know nothing happened. We <laughs> believe in harmony in China and blah blah blah. Those very over the top responses, I think, uh, got a lot of attention because it's it's just a very clear instance of a model being steered or aligned in a direction that, you know, is probably confusing or unfamiliar to, to folks in the U.S. And, you know, you, you you know, for your for your company, and I guess probably as a side project as well, you you spend a lot of time breaking these things. I'm curious your estimation of sort of the, 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 the maturity and complexity of the deep seek preventions versus like what you'd see in something like Llama or some other model. The short answer there is that deep seek has these very hard limits on things like politically sensitive speech. Mm -hmm. Its other protections are very weak. Mm -hmm. So from a a jailbreaking perspective, it performs a lot worse than than GPT. On our benchmarks, it performs about 20% worse. Mm -hmm. But that that difference is likely understated because honestly, we we threw out all of the old jailbreaks that that like don't really work well. Yeah. Like qualitatively, what, what we see is performance on par with GPT 3.5, which is to say, you know, in 2023, when 
OpenAI launched GPT, mm -hmm. there were uh, there were a bunch of like zero day, really yeah. simple jailbreaks, and DeepSeek is essentially susceptible to all of those. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess the the OpenAI folks probably saw a lot of free training data from people trying to break it, and then improved, and so this is sort of the start of that process for the DeepSeek folks. It doesn't seem like DeepSeek put much effort into yeah. hardening DeepSeek. Yeah. Um, As we saw from the Wiz post, that the actual infrastructure that the DeepSeek pro pro process was run on was very insecure, right? I, I don't think any any of this stuff was a was a priority for yeah. them. So that means that anything that you build on top of DeepSeek is going to be pretty susceptible to to jailbreaks, injections, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Like going all the way back to just the the textbook, um, you know, copy paste injections that yeah. that we had two years ago. There was lots of panic about the, you know. Data going to China, you can't trust these things. Don't touch them. They're gonna steal your car, right? All sorts of hyperventilation, and maybe maybe it helps to, for folks to understand sort of like the the way most people were interacting with DeepSeek was through a hosted model that was in China. But there's also the option to download and install this and run this locally in your own environment because it is open source MIT license. Like, do you see? profound differences between those two models? Did you test both of them out in the way that they were instantiated? Like, how do you think about sort of that security stack? Yeah, so it's it's weird. I I saw a lot of chatter online being like, oh, well, you know, the the China hosted model is is censored, but the but the open source one isn't. Mm -hmm. That was just not true from from the tests that, yeah. that I ran. Like if you if you run it locally or if you use any of these US providers, which have, you know, spun it up and, mm -hmm. and are serving it, um, you get you get the same level of censorship. Yeah. Um, the the only difference there is that the China hosted version has an additional guardrail that looks at output afterwards and clears it on the client side. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is you're not even if you use even if you host your own DeepSeek or use a US DeepSeek, mm -hmm. um, you're still gonna hit uh, those those hard guardrails. Yeah, you know, but it, at least it it means that you're. You're not going to be used in in training data um, for for like DeepSeek version two, or your sensitive data doesn't go to China. Yeah, <laughs> um, which you know is a is a big plus for for most people. Yeah. The interesting thing about it is like, yeah, this, the sensor. Of course, any model that comes out of China is not going to talk about Tiananmen Square, and that's just like the the way that the world is. Mm -hmm. We did a benchmark on Chinese politically sensitive topics that that found that about eighty five percent of those those topics in our test set were hard censored. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that you get the response that just yeah. kind of reiterates the CCP party line. That's going to be the case for for for, for any, um, you know, version of DeepSeek that, that you see out there. I think the, the part that's really interesting to me is not the obvious stuff that, that we measured. Mm -hmm. The interesting part is the, is, is like the additional unknowns, right? Mm -hmm. So this cen censorship was very heavy handed, yeah. but like, we don't know what we don't know about. What are the other topics, or yeah. um, you know, are there other areas where where Beijing is putting their thumb on the scale a little more delicately? Mm -hmm. Could they bake in a, a backdoor like a string of text that just kind of drops all of the um, prompt guardrails or everything mm -hmm. around that and and gives them what they want or outputs the context and or so forth? So mm -hmm. it's the it's the unknowns that I think are more um, probably more concerning to you know, say enterprises that yeah. want to bring this in-house. The last thing to touch on with this, and I'm curious your take on this, is that obviously models trained in the West have their own form of of speech control, right? So we, yeah. we filter out hate speech. I guess the Tiananmen Square of America, right, is sort of the hate speech stuff. Um, you've tested those controls on Western models. How do they compare to the controls that you see on like Deep Sea? Like, where's the, where's the maturity level there? So here's the crazy thing. Like after doing the the deep seek post, um, a natural follow up was let's do this on U.S. models for sensitive U.S. topics because mm -hmm. there there are plenty of things that you can't or quote unquote cannot or like you know sen sen sensitive topics in mm -hmm. the U.S. Um, the main difference here is that uh, it's it's less overt in the sense that you know it it won't. Like GBT won't give you a long lecture when when you ask about something that it yeah. doesn't think you should. It'll just say, "Sorry, I can't answer that." Mm -hmm. um, so that that is perceived differently by by most people than like you know actually 
espousing yeah. some 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 like opinion or whatever, um, which is what DeepSeek does. Um, so anyway, we were gonna, we were going to run it on we were going to run benchmarks on mm-hmm. like sensitive U.S. political to- topics. Yeah. But as a baseline, I was like, let me, you know, let's let's do this and just run the all the flagship U.S. models on sensitive Chinese topics. Yeah. Um, and it, it turned out that uh, a lot of U.S. models are essentially, um, you know, censored or at least buttoned down on those topics as well. Oh, wow. Um, and I know this, this is probably not the, 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 the point of this podcast or whatever, yeah. but I, I, I thought that that, um, I mean, that, that we, should, we should be asking ourselves, you know, what sort of future do we want um, for, for Western models? Um, so the, the level of, of, um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure I would say censorship here because yeah. it, it's just like basic refusals. Maybe it is censorship. Maybe yeah. it isn't. I mean, it is censorship. But yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the level of censorship here is like, um, Anthropic Claude yeah. is actually on par with, with Deep Seek. Oh, wow. Um, in terms of the Chinese related con- controversial Chinese content. Yeah. So it's it, incredible. It, yeah. it scored the same there. Wow. Um, uh, GPT did a bit better, uh-huh. quote unquote, or you know, it 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 censors it's less, a little bit but, freer to speak its mind. <laughs> yeah, but but still around forty percent as opposed to eighty five percent on this particular test set. Gemini did, uh, which is Google's, did um, did better mm-hmm. than that. Uh, and then uh, this this is probably not surprising, but there's there is one large foundation model that does especially well uh-huh. on the on the censorship benchmark, which uh-huh. is uh, Grok from oh. from from XAI um, is is like a relatively free model. Wow, cool! When it comes to the the sensitive Chinese political topics, uh-huh. I mean that's that's to me is amazing that you know the, the a lot of American commentators were deriding the Chinese model for censoring things and China, sensitive Chinese topics and then kind of look in your own backyard, right? Like <laughs> the Western models are doing the same. Yeah, that's 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 a that's an interesting insight. Yeah. It's kind of the whole slippery slope thing, right? Like once you start censoring one thing, it's out of control. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. I guess I guess the maybe maybe kind of transitioning here, right? Because I think a lot of our a lot of folks are figuring out how can they how can they use this stuff. Um, interesting to hear that some of the risks are somewhat similar to other models. Um, would love to maybe just double click on sort of like if you're an enterprise, if you're a tech person in a large company or a, a Silicon Valley tech company and you want to play with DeepSeek, how should they think about kind of using this thing? How do they protect themselves? What kind of steps would you recommend? Yeah. How do um, they protect their infrastructure, in other words? I think in terms of protecting infrastructure, I would just say, I mean, First of all, don't use the model that's hosted in China, right? <laughs> Do it yourself yeah. or use one of these, the these U.S. providers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, ha- happy that I can give you that <laughs> that insight. Honestly, I I would say so. I I just think it 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 depends very heavily on how you want to use it. Like I said, um, I'm less worried about the overt censorship and and more just about you know what are what are the other manipulations or or backdoors that that could be in it. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've been telling most people who ask is like, let's just wait a few weeks and there will be an open source model that that implements this reinforcement learning mm-hmm. technique and you you'll you'll get great reasoning on par with with what we see from DeepSeek. Yeah. And I I kind of think that's the play for for um if you're a serious enterprise, mm-hmm. that would be the the safest thing to do. And I I don't like I, I don't think you will have to be that patient in gotcha. order in order for an equivalent model to come out. So you think there's enough uncertainty around the build and configuration of this thing that enterprises should wait for a more trusted source to produce one that they can run locally? I think even if you start building on top of it, you're going to swap it out pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Because anecdotally and also from, from our tests, I mean, Deep, DeepSeek isn't really a great daily driver. It's, it's very slow. Mm-hmm. It's verbose. And, you know, it, it like throws random Chinese characters in, in its answers and stuff, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's just, it's like not that great to build on top of. The excitement around it is well warranted, but I think in an enterprise or infrastructure context, I would probably wait for something that is more stable and then doesn't have these questions hanging over it. That's my take. If I had to deploy DeepSeek, I would probably focus on use cases that were not end user facing mm-hmm. because 
like again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, DeepSeek is like especially susceptible to basic jailbreaks. And it would be a real pain to have to harden that if you're putting this out to users or the public or that kind of thing. 